Alien 3, rewrite by Rex Pickett, based on Walter Hill, David Geiler Draft, 12 18 First draft revised, January 5th, 1991. Interior, Mess Hall. The commando team, led by Bishop 2, striding through the mess hall, looking every which way. Suddenly, Aaron comes flying into view, out of breath, a look of utter consternation on his face. He stops dead in his tracks when he sees the commando team, all twelve of them, heavily armed. Bishop 2, silhouetted, approaches him. Assistant Superintendent Aaron? Yes, sir. We have an emergency here, sir. We know all about it. The colony's been wiped out. There's no one left except me. Where's Lieutenant Ripley? She's dead. The place has gone toxic. You should get out while you can. Don't panic. We're here to micromanage the situation. What's all this? A specially trained team to help get the Xenomorph under control. Now, where is she? Aaron looks over at the commando team and notices that, aside from pulse rifles, some of them are carrying what appear to be sophisticated animal control devices. I don't know. Look, we want to help her. We want to help all of you. Get you out of here safely. You must believe that. I'm confused. That's why we are here. Show us to Lieutenant Ripley. Aaron, perspiring ambivalent, wanting to believe. All right, follow me. Aaron starts walking off. Bishop 2 signals to his men. They stride off, weapons brandished, Aaron leading the way. Upon receiving confirmation from the EEV bioscan readout that Ellen Ripley was carrying the embryo of an alien queen, Wayland yutani expedited their rescue team to Furina Fury 161. The USS Patna made its way to the prison planet with company representative Michael Bishop leading the mission. With him were the Wayland yutani commandos, an ominous armed presence seemingly prepared to handle obtaining the xenomorph specimen, and likely handling anyone who may have gotten in their way. Though only appearing briefly in Alien 3's climax, these figures left an impression and became cemented within the overall universe. As per the Alien RPG, Wayland yutani maintains a commando corps trained to handle and capture Xenomorph specimens. Called the Dog Catchers, these corporate security units usually include four commandos, two animal containment specialists, a science team, and a chief surgeon, often led by a high-level corporate executive. These commandos wear all-purpose environment suits, also known as ape suits for short. It is a specialized armored compression garb designed for combat and animal control under adverse environmental conditions. It offers a filtered air supply, limited armor, resistance to temperature extremes, and is impervious to caustic substances. The helmet includes protective eyewear and a mask to protect the wearer's face. Additionally, they carry pulse rifles and utilize specialized capture equipment. Unfortunately, most of the information Wayland yutani has gathered about the Xenomorph and its subspecies is based on second-hand reports, and therefore these teams are often ill-equipped to deal with the actual threat the creatures represent. The RPG goes on to explain that despite the failure to obtain a specimen on Fury 161, Michael Bishop continued to keep a team of commandos on the ready. Never one to throw in the towel, Michael Bishop has since operated on the frontier, tracking down any Xenomorph XX-121 leads and sightings in the hopes of capturing one and weaponizing it. His corporate transport ship, the Patna, can frequently be found docked at the Wayland yutani corporate berth on Anchor Point Station. The team sent to Fury arrived just precious moments late, missing out on the chance to capture the alien after Ripley destroyed it. With all the gear and weaponry assembled for this mission, their firepower, just as Ripley feared, was used against the prison's survivors. Morse is shot and injured, while Aaron, after attacking Michael Bishop, was killed. No combat against the actual aliens this time around. For Alien 3's story, well known for undergoing countless changes, this may not have always been the case. When David Fincher finally came aboard to direct the film and shared his ideas for the climax, the concept was originally quite different. Alien, The Archive, the self-proclaimed ultimate guide to the classic movies, details Alien 3's long road to arriving at its story. This includes a glimpse at some of Fincher's ideas for that ending. The Alien film Fincher says he pitched to Fox that secured him the job was grand and epic, and expensive. It wasn't about tough guys in outer space, he told Empire. It was about pedophiles in outer space. It was a huge movie, and it was very complicated and political. 
There were three Lance Henriksons running around. Paul McGann was a serial killer. And at the end of the movie, you had the alien running around and you've got 3,000 troopers on their way. It was massive and strange, and the idea of it was great. I went, they gave me the work, so they're going to let me make the movie. Then it was like, we can't do that. We can only have 18 guys show up at the end. The sheer amount of all those commandos showing up at the end would have been pretty daunting, but the small group we do get is still effective. There's a visual menace to the design of these characters, thanks largely to the costume designers David Perry and Bob Ringwood. Also, according to the archive, the design of these costumes took inspiration from the original 1979 film's concepts from Jean Giraud. The designs, which evoke a sense of samurai-style armor and fusion, played heavily into creating the commando suits we see in Alien 3. Beyond the film, the presence of the commandos lived on in different forms. We saw them appear in a few video games. Oddly enough, not on any of the Alien 3 official video game console versions available at the time, which maybe could have added some variety to the gameplay where Ripley, fully armed, takes on hundreds of aliens on Fury. You would have been able to see them if you had a chance to play the arcade game, Alien 3 The Gun. While they're not actual enemies to fight against in the game, they do appear in an ending cutscene. A few years later, though, they were among the bevy of cannon fodder in the first-person shooter Alien Trilogy. According to the game's manual, these commandos are referred to as alien handlers. True to their appearance in the movie, they're armed with pulse rifles, and of course, once defeated, will often leave pulse rifle clips behind to pick up. Believe me, you'll need them. Curiously enough, the commandos never found their way to alien shooter games that would follow. No appearances were made in games such as Alien vs. Predator and the most recent virtual bug hunt, Aliens Fireteam Elite. Curiouser still, even in the game Aliens Colonial Marines, which literally recreates scenes from Alien 3 and its Stasis Interrupted campaign, excludes the commando design, instead opting for its own brand of mercenary. I'm not quite sure of the reasoning behind this, but looking for reason within the decisions behind this game seems like a fruitless endeavor. When it comes to toys and collectibles, the Wayland yutani Commandos have certainly seen their moments in the spotlight. NECA had a figure released, Eagle Moss included them in their statue series, and Commando figures even became available in the recent line from Lannard Toys. These figures come with a Wayland yutani planetary rover bike, maybe, just maybe, hinting toward what we may have seen in Fincher's originally conceived ending. The most recent inclusion of the Commandos would be in the aforementioned Alien RPG from Free League Publishing. In the extended alien universe such as games, comics, and novels, their appearances have been somewhat limited. Do you think this should change? Are these commandos deserving of more inclusion in future alien stories, or do you prefer the other mercenary designs we've seen? Comment below and let me know what you think. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with future videos. A very special thanks goes out to Brandon James, Grizz4756, Ronnie Jensen, and Zeno Shadowmorph, Queen Tears of the Patreon Hive. Thank you to Gregory Ford and John Griggs, the Hive's Praetorians. A very special thanks goes out to Lady Anne in the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. And in the role of Wayland yutani executives, Michael Cole, Nicholas Butta, and Wesley A. Weaver Jr. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.